On Tuesday, Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad launched a horrible chemical weapons attack on innocent civilians. Using a deadly nerve agent, Assad choked out the lives of helpless men, women, and children. It was a slow and brutal death for so many. Even beautiful babies were cruelly murdered in this very barbaric attack. No child of God should ever suffer such horror. Tonight, I ordered a targeted military strike on the airfield in Syria. The chemical attack was launched. It is in this vital national security interest of the United States to prevent and deter the spread and use of deadly chemical weapons. There can be no dispute that Syria used banned chemical weapons, violated its obligations under the Chemical Weapons Convention, and ignored the urging of the UN Security Council. Years of previous attempts at changing Assad's behavior have all failed and failed very dramatically. As a result, the refugee crisis continues to deepen and the region continues to destabilize, threatening the United States and its allies. Tonight, I call on all civilized nations to join us in seeking to end the slaughter and bloodshed in Syria, and also to end terrorism of all kinds and all types. We ask for God's wisdom as we face the challenge of our very troubled world. We pray for the lives of the wounded and for the souls of those who have passed. And we hope that as long as America stands for justice, then peace and harmony will, in the end, prevail. Good night, and God bless America and the entire world. Thank you. President Trump. Good evening. We are coming on the air right now because President Trump has just ordered a military strike on Syria. It comes just two days after that horrific chemical attack by the Assad regime that killed almost 100 people, including women and children. President Trump called it an affront to all humanity. Now he has retaliated. I'm here with our chief global affairs anchor, Martha Raddatz. And Martha, all through this campaign, just three days ago, the president saying this is not our fight. And as soon as he saw those pictures, as soon as he saw those images from that chemical attack, he wanted action. I think this is the single fastest punishing strike I have ever seen. Just a couple of days, he made his decision. I also have to say that Secretary Mattis, who was CENTCOM commander in 2013 when President Obama decided not to take action against Syria, this is something he was frustrated by in 2013. He's now the Secretary of Defense. They had plans in place, and they've gone ahead with uh, cruise missiles from Navy ships in the Mediterranean. I want to go to our military consultant, Steve Gannon in Washington. Steve, you've flown military missions over Iraq. This appears to be Tomahawk cruise missiles against airfields. What does that say to you? It says that the president wanted to not risk any U.S. lives and to punish Assad as quickly as possible. So we think the cruise missiles were launched by two U.S. Navy ships, Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, the USS Ross and the USS Porter, in the eastern Mediterranean. They would have flown likely over Lebanon, low altitude, and come in back door and hit targets within Syria in Assad-held terrain. I want to go to our chief White House correspondent, John Carl. John, the president down in Mar-a-Lago, you're there as well for that summit with President Xi of China, surrounded by his entire brain trust. He sure is, and I'm told we will hear from the president shortly, a senior official confirming that these were Tomahawk cruise missiles aimed at Syrian regime-held airfields. George, quite a turnaround for this president. This is the president who had as a candidate repeatedly said that he was an America first candidate, that Syria was not the United States problem, that we shouldn't focus on the United States, 
But now, uh, after seeing that chemical weapons attack, he was very blunt yesterday, speaking in the Rose Garden, that that changed his views on Syria, and now he has ordered military action. I want to go to our chief foreign correspondent, Terry Moran, as well. And Terry, last year you embedded with those Russian troops who are also in Syria, fighting with the United States against ISIS. One of the factors that complicates the U.S. mission here, and we know that the, the Russians were warning the United States against military action in the Security Council today. That's right, George. This action by President Trump puts his administration squarely at odds with Vladimir Putin's Russia in Syria. Those Russian troops I embedded with, they changed the war. They saved Bashar al-Assad's regime in Syria, uh, and they are fighting not just ISIS, but fighting to protect a longtime Russian strategic interest. They've got a base on the Mediterranean Sea there. They project power throughout the Med Middle East from their influence in Syria, but they aren't really committed to Bashar al-Assad, the president of Syria. They, they, they want to do a deal, but this will make it harder. Okay, Tara Moran and our entire team, thank you very much. We're waiting to hear from President Trump right now. No word yet from the Russians or the Syrians, but President Trump has ordered and completed a military strike against Syria.